Yeah, I don't know what in Victoria 3 leads to that creaky door sound. Hey, folks, Quill18 here, or should I say... Buongiorno. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday live stream. I actually, last night, I was 75% that I was probably going to cancel today's stream. Uh, because I couldn't sleep. It was like, I was awake until like four o'clock in the morning, tossing and turning, could not sleep. And I was like, oh, maybe I should just cancel. And even today when I woke up and I woke up late because of all that, I was like, I woke up, I was like in bed. I don't know, man, maybe we should just cancel it. And I'm like, no, I cannot do that. We have to stream and I'm excited for some Victoria 3. And then as I'm getting ready for the stream, I find out, oh, of course, while I'm playing today, Canada versus Belgium is happening in the foot soccer ball. <sighs> Maybe I shoulda. Anyway, I got it set to record. Chat, it is your job. If someone comes into the channel and someone says something about the score or the happenings in the foot soccer ball match, it is your job to spam like the word spoiler or something so that chat scrolls so I don't see it. I'm gonna watch it right after I'm finished streaming. You've gotta save me. You've gotta protect me from spoilers, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, who's Belgium? I know. Man, it's going to be great to see Canada get absolutely slaughtered to an imaginary nation today, isn't it? Because that's almost certainly what's going to happen. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> or you can spam fake, fake scores. That would be fine, too. You know, to hide, to hide anything that might happen. Uh, before we start, and I'm very excited to start, because I've, actually, I've been playing some Victoria 3 on my own. I don't <laughs> have shockingly little time between everything else to properly, because we play so many games on the channel, right? So it's hard to find time to properly play on my own all the games that we covered. But I have had a chance to play some Vicky 3 on my own over the last week. Um, and I think learnified a bunch of things, um, especially with regards to warfare and combat and stuff like that. Uh, I've had a couple of really fun games with the Ottomans, because like the Ottomans seem to have a really bad time as the AI. Uh, so it's like, you know what I'll play as them? Um, and they're actually a lot of fun to play. Uh, but I, anyway, and but there's, you know, some warfare aspects and stuff like that. So some things I learned in there uh, that are very exciting. Hopefully we can apply them over here. But before we get there, I mean, I do have another monitor for soccer, but, you know, probably I should focus on my job. I have a package. I mean, I have a package. Uh, I have, and I don't remember the, it, I'm hoping the username will be inside because there has been someone in chat uh, about it, and I can't remember the name. I feel like it's one of the X names, but I don't want to say the wrong name. Um, but I have a package, and on the custom slip, so this comes from the Scottish Lands, and the chocolate, or the chocolate, the content description says chocolate. So I'm very excited. We're going to open this up. It is, uh, it is really taped up, though. It has massive amount of packing tape, so I've got myself a knife, and I also have my very, very intense, uh, kitchen shears here so we're gonna see i don't know where the best place to attack this package is probably at this seam over here oh thick paper thick tape that's good i gotta say i these i'm always impressed when people send these because i mean it's very thoughtful to think about it to you know um um to um so we're curate sort of a selection of products to send all those things but the impressive stuff is how much shipping you people are willing to put up with. Because this thing here, I think it's, it's, the, the thing says it looks like it's five chocolate bars. Um, it was 15 pounds to ship. It's that is a, uh, that is some serious fiscal weight, you know? All right, now that I've got that. No one X, whoa! Hang on, we're gonna read that properly in a second. I'm gonna focus on one thing at a time, but wow. Excellent. Ooh, I see a brand name that I'm very excited about. Okay. Come on out here. There we go. Yes. I'm pulling them all out and then we'll, we'll look. Ooh. Ooh, and there's a note. Excellent. Put that there. Zalior, I was right. My, I think, I think it's Zalior, but I didn't want to say the wrong thing. I have five bars of chocolate. I'm gonna bring these four up because the fifth one, as I say, is probably kind of see-through because it's greenish. These are Mackey's brands. Okay, Mackey's 
is an amazing place in Scotland. This is like, um, you can see the coo on there. Uh, Mackey's is like a dairy in the Scottish land and they make amazing, amazing ice cream. And I've seen the, um, I'm pretty sure I've seen like one of the Mackey's places, unless I'm getting confused with things. I don't know if Essentia's in the chat, she could probably clarify it. But I'm pretty sure we've passed, passed by the Mackey's Creamery. I think it's a distillery. Because they make ice cream and stuff that is really, really nice. Um, and I know they make good chocolate. I think I've had some of this. I think I've specifically had like the dark chocolate um, before. And then we've got the traditional milk chocolate. But orange. This one I'm very excited for. I love mint chocolate. And this is dark chocolate with mint, which is going to be, I think, a great combo. And then finally, with honeycomb. Now, um, we've, we've, we've got stuff here that we call, um, that, that we've got the equivalent of honeycomb here. We don't call it honeycomb here. What do we call it? It's like candy sponge or something. I don't know what we call honeycomb here. Like, I've seen it. I've had it lots of times, but we don't tend to refer to it as honeycomb. But I've, I've made it too. Honeycomb is great. It's like you're putting sugar, basically. You're melting down some sugar. Then you throw in some uh, baking soda, and the whole thing gets all foamy, and you pour it out onto a pan. And as it cools, it, it's got this, yeah, this like honeycomb type structure, and it's delicious. Anyway, I love chocolate with bits in it. Why's my phone buzzing? That's weird. And it's spam. Excellent. Um, Chocolate with Rice Krispies and stuff I really like. Not as keen, I don't like chocolate with peanuts so much just because not as into peanuts, but almonds, yes. Have you tried chili orange chocolate? I believe I have and it's wonderful. Oh, it was Graham's Dairy that we went near the University of Sterling. Thank you, Essentia. All right, so I got confused, it wasn't Mackey's. I've had, you get the little Mackey's ice cream, the little tubs with the little wooden like spoony thing. Have that, had that plenty of times, they're delicious. And just like the plain, like the plain unflavored. It's not even vanilla, it's nothing like that. Just plain sweet cream, just delicious, wonderful stuff. Anyway, very excited for that, and I'm sure the family is also very excited. I have a note. The post office tells me that it is legal to post alcohol to Canada, but once in country, is it legal to deliver it? That is, okay, so Canada's got a really weird thing with mailing alcohol specifically. Um. It's actually not legal in Canada to mail alcohol across provincial lines. Yeah, and it's, I don't know, it's a whole thing. Um, so no single malt this time. We'll think of a way to disguise it next time. <laughs> Love to you and the clan from Glasgow, D, Zalior. Um, someone did once send me alcohol in the mail. They had the package labeled as coffee samples and they sent me coffee flavored vodka. <laughs> That's how they snuck it past customs. I do not recommend it because there's a good chance the package will just be, just be claimed at customs and it'll be lost. Lost in the belly of some customs officers, probably. <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited about that. Thank you very much. Without further ado, oh, we got to check our messages. All right, there'll be a little bit more ado and then we'll start playing some Vicky. Um, do I not have the Streamlabs tab open? I do not. Load faster. Terms of services change. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Firstborn child, fine. Nordics, thank you very much for the generous contribution to the whiskey and chocolate fund. Maybe this time there'll be more whiskey than chocolate since I just got some chocolate. Uh, been subscribed for 100 months, says Nordics. Uh, I think since Let Him Dare, Drill 18 stream. Oh, God, so Wish I could catch more streams, but anyway, here's some money. Thank you very much, Nordics. Thanks for the support. Much appreciated. Also, thank you very much to the people who just resubscribed. You got Desert Tiger at 25 months. Yeah, speaking of speaking of programming and stuff, more content for the Quilly King Creates channel. I hope so. My brain has just not been there, but I really want to get back into it. I'm actually looking at doing different things other than Unity, like more maybe like uh, web-based JavaScript stuff and things like that, because it's so easy and accessible and wonderfully wonderful to develop. You know, looking at them, I'm I've been looking into uh, like the WebGL like graphic engines and things like that. So I don't know. We'll hope. English Badger. Is that a one-year twitch anniversary at 12 months? Always forget to press the Jeff Bezos button. <laughs> and indeed, Nordix did resub for the big hundo. 100 months from Nordix. Thank you very much. Gandalf Beard is at 49 months. That's divisible by seven. Speaking of seven, Cossack Brother has been here 
for seven months. Thank you very much. IT pinned in at 60. There's a five year Twitch anniversary. Urza is at 34. Urza, one of my favorite expansions for Magic the Gathering. Uh, and Gary, the Cormorant at 37 months. You know, we have Cormorants up here, and every time I see them, I kind of think of your username there, Gary. Okay, let's play Vicky. Is that huge swath US in the middle of the Sahara? Yep, the United States has gotten into the colonial game in this particular version of history, uh, and which means we now have a border with them. We've actually been in a war with the United States at some point. I can't remember, did they join on the side of Austria at some point? Or am I getting confused about something that happened in one of my Ottoman games? I might be confuzzled over there. Anyway, it could be interesting for us to consider uh, making some moves against the U.S. Uh, they have, they're have they heavily reliant on conscription. They don't have a lot of professional battalions. Uh, compared to us, if we have 378. We could maybe make some moves over there. I have no idea. Um, look at... <laughs> I like how, like, France, you've got this name over here. But right in between these two letters, there's just a chaos of colors between the R and the A over here in France that still exists. Um, we might decide to go and uh, we I, we are currently lowering relations with Tunis uh, so that we could run a Annex Vassal uh, war goal on them. We shall see. Um, going after Egypt at some point is probably in the cards. We'll take a look at that as well. And we still have a couple of provinces to take from Austria. So early on in our campaign, we had some difficulty in the warfare over here. And that's one of the reasons I did go and play some Victoria 3 on my own finally um, and do a bunch of reading and stuff like that about the, um, you know, warfare and what kind of tricks people have figured out. There was actually a recent Reddit post not that long ago, maybe three or four days ago, uh, that looked into some of the mechanics as well about things. Um, and how you kind of want to work stuff. And it's really helped. My Ottoman campaign, again, like I did two. The first one, I didn't understand how the, uh, it was actually a multiplayer game with Rhino. Um, didn't understand how like they, all their mechanics for uh, canceling the sick man of Europe work. Um, and then so it was learning that and also having some more difficulties. And then I played again on my own after I understood how the sick man of Europe mechanics work. It was pretty easy to run those reforms at that point. There's some RNG, but it got it past no problem and also had a much easier time of the warfare. So hopefully we can make new over there. One of the big things just to, you know, uh, as a just pro tip for the warfare, what you really want in each one of your military regions um, is you really just as much as possible, you want one mega barracks in a single state. Uh, as much as possible and uh, ideally when you recruit your generals and upgrade them you actually want spare units left over you want these units in reserve so that they can be cycled in you actually don't want to mobilize everything at once that's the that's the long and short of it uh Zalio, oh my god Zalio are coming in with some gifts as well hey hey i'm happy you were here i actually hadn't noticed you in chat properly yet but uh hopefully you're here for the chocolate opening i'm sorry if i missed it in the chat my bad uh, you think it's possible to take all of Africa and playing a Zulu? I mean, it would be tricksy. It would be tricksy. We'll see. Na, 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 na. That's great. Ten subs. Thank you very much. Who owns air? Uh, we took some of it. Um, I don't think... So, I don't think air exists as a province. Because it starts as a nation, but I think it occupies Niger. So, a lot of Niger is in the United States. We own a sliver of it. Oh, you're at work, Doc. Villain tag me so I catch it on the VOD. Nice. That's all for now. Well, I'll see. I'll see you on Saturday, I guess, Alior. <laughs> Maybe when you're not working. Um, ba 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 ba. How do gold mines work, or is that just YouTube trolls? Um, first of all, I think we have access to gold mines at all here in our nation. No. Uh, when I play as Canada, there's some gold mines in the west. Now, there's like a mix of things. Um, I don't know. I want to see the province. So if we look here. There's two things. So the gold fields that you don't really have control over, they just sort of spawn. And then there's gold mines as well. And they just produce minting. Because gold itself, like, so So yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know how to answer your question, but I know they exist. Oh, sorry, you're right. I've been playing on my own. So I use the, UI, the, the GUI scaling to fit more things on the screen. There you go. Let me set that back to 100 here. For the streaming. I, I gotta say, the, the, the GUI scaling at 80 or 90% really is nice for fitting more things on the screen, but yeah, it's not it's not good for uh, for streaming stuff. Oh, it's about your Canada LP where you never built gold mines. Yeah, I don't know. That the thing is that thing there, the Canada LP, um, I know it's still going on. When was the last time I recorded an episode of that? I, I'm not even reading the comments on that because I know it's gonna be a bunch of stuff that's totally obsolete. 
Um, the last time I recorded an episode for that was three weeks ago. I have not played the Canada LP for three weeks now. And we still have a few episodes in the bank. So yeah, I'm going to load that up at some point and be like, what the fuck is going on? What did I do? Yeah, that, that's how obsolete everything is in there. Um, I don't think, I don't know if I've recorded Canada. No, I guess I have recorded Canada since we started the ability that's play, but it was in the early days. So I still don't know what, what was going on. So yeah. So yeah, you can uh, you can respond to those things with uh, Canada. Whenever I record the next episode, I'll I'll be uh, telling people about that as well. It's like oh, I haven't been here in well. It, that, by the time I record another one, it might be four weeks uh, since gameplay. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. last episode, you said thirty years left. My Canada LP. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, it looks like the last episode I recorded for Canada was episode 22, so we're coming we're coming up there, unless there's some things that haven't been labeled right or renamed yet, so we'll see. Anyway, let's unpause this game. Oh, actually, no, never mind, because um, stuff in the queue. When I load up the save today, there was some extra stuff in the queue, steel mines and things, but I wanted to do a revisit on the situation currently to see if that's still what we want to do. Um, and I think there's a good chance of that. So steel prices are a little on the high side. Yeah, you know what? I think I will go ahead and uh, do the steel mine thing after all. Um, but yeah, I want to reevaluate on the stream. So, ideally, so one of the things too is I keep going back and forth on how I'm stacking my industry in this game. Uh, because, of course, we do get an efficiency bonus if we have more of it in a state, right? We get efficiency or economy of scale kind of thing going on. But sometimes it is nice to have like smaller sections of things so that we can change production modes sort of piecemeal here we really don't have much of a choice in terms of splitting up because we do have some limitations of our population like we, I mean, I'm, not, I'm clearly not building more in Lombardy or Libya right now uh, and even celebs and Lazio doesn't have a ton of people so I might just want to start a new group somewhere else uh, Venezia has tons of workers ready to go so I think I'm gonna go ahead and put in 10 there maybe I'll put in 10 in Campania and then we'll revisit at that point and see where it is Quill inspired me to complete my dinner with a bit of green and blacks. Oh, that's a good chocolate brand. 3% organic chocolate with mint that hit the spot. Ooh, lovely. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but most that 17 minutes was dealing with other things other than gameplay. We do have expensive military goods, uh, mostly ships, also fabric. That is interesting. Do, 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 do. I love to stack clothes and silk production in Lombardi when I play Italy. It's simply too convenient. Why Lombardi specifically? Because they don't have a bonus. Is it just because they have a you know, good amount of population base for things? Actually, Lombardi doesn't have any workers left over currently. And, oh, we do have a shortage of income. Oh, we need hardwood. Okay, we have lots of bureaucracy. Let's see if we can import some hardwood here. Oh, the Russian market is fine. I actually didn't check to see what the deficit actually was. We have a shortage of man of wars. Maybe I'll import some man of wars as well. Uh, oh. <laughs> Our buy order is four. That's probably Tunis. Right, I think we looked into this. It's probably Tunis that doesn't have that. That's still trying to use some or something like that. Because I think we've moved over from everything else. So I don't think it really matters. I don't know. We could bring in bring in seven, then we'll have three extras. Yeah, we have a, we do have a lot of bureaucracy here, but actually, as a percentage, right, of our production and our usage is not very high, which is why it's barely giving us any state construction efficiency. Anyone in Quill's market other than Tunis the Vassal? I can't remember. Did we get the Ottomans in here last time? No, that's a different game. Yeah, so it's only Tunis. No one, no one has joined it, which is fine. We do have some extra diploma, diplomatic influence. Uh, let's, yeah, keep Spain and Great Britain maybe on our side. All right, so maybe we'll improve relations with the Ottomans as well. Oh my God, did we just... Oh, look at our income. Went from like a 100K surplus to half a million surplus. 
Proportional taxation, yeah, baby. I didn't even recognize that we we're passing a law coming into this. Oh, wow. I didn't realize Great Britain hates us this much. Let's stop improving relations because that's not going to go forever. Money, money, money. Could we pass this? What's our current political situation? Radicalized landowners and Catholic Church. Okay, Catholic Church is man marginalized. Landowners are only 8.5%. The thing is, we do have a lot of radicals. And I'm wondering if... I'm, I'm kind of hoping to improve this as much as possible. A lot, Most of it is because of standard of living. Okay, I, I suspect that's going to lead to a revolution. And we, we still have some crankiness about agrarianism and censorship. I think we're going to have to improve our political situation before we pass contentious laws like that. But hey, we got tons of money. Let's take a look at our bouget over here. I'm going to... I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll equalize the government wages. Um, I could temporarily drop taxes or kill some of the consumption taxes as well. Um, but I'd rather maybe... What I'm thinking of... Look at the graph! <laughs> look at the graph break completely. I think I'd rather build some extra construction. Yeah, women's suffrage would improve our workers a lot. And, you know, right thing to do and everything. I'm not even using all my construction potential. Jesus. Okay. First things first, let's queue up some more work here. Um, we're short on coffee. And I think we have the ability to build some, co some coffee plantations. Uh, I don't know how much each one uses. Does it tell us in tooltip or we're going to have to go in the other one? Yeah, it would be nice in here if it told us how much workers these use. But a lot of things use, like, somewhere between, like, 1.5 to 3K to a few things like that. Yeah, I hope they never fix the graphics exactly. Um, I'm going to go and build three more over here, a couple here, and a couple here. That's probably fine. We might still want to import. Um, ironclads. Okay, that's not going to help quality of life, but... That is a pretty valuable thing, and I think I would like to produce it. So, let's consider... Uh, you know what? I think I'm just going to queue up, like, ten more shipyards in Campania. I think we're going to be happy with that. Wine. Okay, so this wine problem keeps being an issue. And we keep not being able to, like, supply as much wine as the, the workers or the people want. Although... go we're gonna get some more wheat farms which do of course have the wine production uh we'll have to see what our price of wheat is i think last time i checked it was still a little on the higher side but we'll see um and then we, of course we can turn more of the wheat into groceries i think the groceries might be a little bit limited by um uh by our fish Yeah, I mean, it says not enough qualifications, but it says that all the time, and qualifications do produce. This is not the same as, like, number of workers, right? So we might not have enough fully qualified staff, but they're, they're, they they come, they produce over time. Um, we could spread out some more universities, which actually might not be the worst thing to do. If we have all this money... Okay, our queue is full right now. I'm going to wait before I add in anything else. I think it's been queued for a little bit. Um, yeah, it's only 36 weeks, though. So we're going to burn through that. We might spread a bunch of universities and see how things go. But yeah, mostly what I want to do is I want to get more people hired so that their um, quality of life... And bring down, um, like, expenses, right? So if we look over here, yeah, the pops are paying quite a bit. Uh, the biggest expense is clothes and then grain. Of course, they're paying like crazy for wine. But, you know, these are the better things to tackle to sort of uh, bring down the overall costs. Um, and, yeah, I think what we're looking to do is expand tea and coffee as well, because that is included in the luxury drinks need. Now, our pops do prefer wine because they're Italians and they have that. But we could still maybe bring down the demand of wine a little bit by providing more tea and coffee. Okay, so get that going. <laughs> there we go. We're burning through this quite a bit because not everything we're constructing comes out of the um, investment pool. Which I don't know why. What are we, what's at the top of the queue? Oh, these shipyards. We're paying for these shipyards. Mm -hmm. Lower taxes mean higher demand for goods, meaning greater potential for profit. That is true. Yeah, higher taxes early boost construction, lower tax later boost demand. Works wonders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm recording the uh, Canada versus Belgium match. Which I'm expecting is going to be a one-sided slaughter. 
But you know, maybe the Belgians have a chance. No spoilers. I'm recording it for later. What's Murka doing? Going after Ben. Okay. I would like to get informed of a few more things over here, but I'm kind of thinking about burning off some infamy uh, so that we can take another crack at Austria. I'm going to build up my military some more before we do that. Belgium doesn't exist, so clearly Canada wins by default. <laughs> um, all right. Greek migration to the windward coast. Oh, American territory. You know, come to me. And just like that, we caught up on our construction queue. So ridiculous. Yeah, what is our what is our status on? Wait, I can build a skyscraper. What's the requirement for building a skyscraper? Oh, you need to identify and survey an appropriate site. So I could build one in Venezia. What does a skyscraper do for us? Oh, it gives us government administration level throughput. Okay. I don't think we really have government administration in Venice, and currently we're fine. I mean, we have some built there from when we took over. Scrapes this guy. Um, yeah, what I'm, I think we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, universities. And we do have a few. So we'll be looking at places with, that have high population. We'll look at universities because it will produce more um, more qualifications there. Plus, um, I think that... I don't, don't actually know exactly how it contributes to literacy and things like that. Skyscraper in an area known for being swampy. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. You know, I think I'm just I'm gonna put down a few level ones. Hey, Darfur. A few level ones in places. And actually, yeah, the colonies might benefit from it the most. Well, I don't know if it matters. I think if you don't have multiculturalism then your colonies uh, can actually be a little bit stuck because I think some of the qualifications can't be reached. But we do have multiculturalism. We do still have a state religion, which might be nice to go to get rid of. Um, yeah, let's see these landowners. Are we... What are we doing with our authority? Okay, I'm going to cancel a consumption tax. And I'm going to use it to suppress... Oh, I probably can't suppress because of uh, free speech. No, maybe I can. They have right of assembly. Is it telling me here? I guess if I look at the law, maybe I can find out if I can suppress or not. Because I don't have protected speech. Okay, I think I can still suppress, just doesn't do as much because of right of assembly. I think protected speech, I can't suppress at all. Okay, let me do that. Um, I'm going to drop the consumption tax and luxury clothes because this gives us the least. And I'm going to actively, yeah, we're going to suppress the landowners. <clears throat> we can sometimes somehow get them marginalized. That'd be good. I mean, they should generally be shrinking as we urbanize and industrialize our economy more and more, but we'll see. <clears throat> What's happening in Prussia doesn't matter to us. Not really, they're having a revolution. Good for them. Hope they have fun. Okay. And yeah, we're letting the infamy burn off. We are in uh, like the base category right now, but as soon as we like put down a war goal, I'll put it back up, which would encourage people to maybe not side with us. So we can let that burn off. Plus, um, I, I think before I go to war with Austria, I'm going to want to, like, level up my military some more. Like, possibly just by building barracks. Because I think tech-wise... Right, skirmish, shrapnel... Oh, I'm not running machine gunners here. Yeah, we need ammunitions and small arms, because we're going to want to run machine gunners. Maybe I'll switch to it now. Okay, I'm going to switch to it now. And the reason is that um, when you make a switch... Oh, I don't know if it affects this. But when you make a switch, uh, for sure for the um, um, the infantry and the artillery, for the next 12 months, you have a huge malice to your your combat strength. Um, if we pick... I don't know if there's an easier way to find it. What I'm going to do is, like, 
I look through, find a place that's got a barracks. Yeah, right here. And you see this bouton right there? Gives you this ad equipment adjustment thing. So we have a 75% penalty to offense and defense. It does decay over the course of 12 months. So it doesn't, like, stay 75% for the full 12 months. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think the medical aid doesn't trigger that. But the others might? I don't know if reconnaissance does. Maybe they all do. I didn't think the uh, medical aid does. Now, I'd also like to get the medical aid going on as a whole. But the problem is... We don't really have a solid way to have a, a good supply of opium, which is making me wonder if we just go after Persia. Persia's got oil, Persia's got opium. Uh, and yeah, even importing is like is really difficult to pull off. God, I need to put a million things in my production queue, it's crazy. Well, let's let's consider the um, the military then. Um oh, food industry. Vacuum cleaning needs electricity, right? Uh, no. It doesn't. Fish, fish, fish. Uh, I think I have the shipyards split up correctly. Okay. Yo, we're still in rifles over here. Okay, we can't go bolt action until we get access to oil. We'll go to repeating rifles, which admittedly is going to tank the price of small arms, but they'll get over it. Breach loaders. I think we actually can do this, although artillery is not worth much right now. Urban centers we need to be... Let's move there for now. I can, I can do bits and pieces. Okay, we need more glass and more steel. I'll we'll work on it. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to queue those up now, actually. Um, well, we're still building steel mills. Hence the zero over here. These are some new ones that haven't uh, come into thing. Where's our glass? I mean, I could check imports as well, but... Glass tends to be fairly profitable throughout. I mean, we can literally build Venetian glass. I mean, that's 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 been a thing historically. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw down a few more glass places. I think quite a bit. And then more steel mills as well. Maybe what I'll do is I'll build a few at 10 so that we can... Because the steel mills definitely have a few modes we can cycle through. And that'll be handy. Venetian glass is mandatory. Yeah. Okay, radicals have dropped. We are, again, in theory, improving our quality of life. Yeah, we should probably get power going. And I'll spread these out. We, we lose some economy of scale bonuses, but it means we'll be able to um, change over to coal power plants and then oil power plants in a bit of a controlled way. I think 1.06, uh, Sunny Ren, um, helped with the, uh, the late game uh, lag somewhat because uh, um, I think they, with the latest patch, they consolidate some of the pop groups a little bit more. Uh, the game certainly, I believe, is running faster than it was last time we streamed. It still slows down a bit. I think 1.1 has bigger plans for consolidating uh, pop groups. And as far as I know, that's where the lag comes from. Is lots of little micro pop groups. Okay. God, we do construct so fast here. Oh, explosives. Well, actually, let's choose some of those. So those are going to be our chemical plants. I mean, we need it for construction, but we're also going to need it for munitions. Lots more explosives. Mm -hmm. Civil Wars in the Marine probably don't have that lag. That's possibly true, too. We still have such an excess of cash. I'm kind of still happy to build this up right now, especially since I do want to build up the military, which is going to be expensive. Uh, what was that? Need a mod that's able to 3D architecture from playing Italy, Germany. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's visual lag. I mean, maybe, maybe there is something there, but yeah, I assumed it was pop group math. 
Yeah, we still have, we have turmoil in places, which isn't helping the economy, and that is related to the amount of radicals we have. But it's getting better. Yeah, see, the radicals are shrinking because our standard of living is improving. There's some discrimination. It's all religious discrimination because we have multiculturalism, but not the other bit yet. And we're getting some because of these demands, which is annoying. Brr. Yeah, no one's radicalized right now. Lanterns are down to 7.7. .7. I don't think I can weaken landowners anymore via... Oh, we still have hereditary bureaucrats? Well, hell, hold on a sec. Because that is giving the landowners political strength. We can eliminate that by going to anything other than hereditary. Um... So appointed bureaucrats gives us more taxation capacity. We don't really need that because we're, we, I think we're good on, uh, and we have some slight shortages, but not the same. I think I'd like to go to elected bureaucrats, especially if we get some new institutions. Although the petit bourgeoisie, I'd rather have the intellectuals have political strength. I don't know, I think we'll probably go to appointed for the intelli intelligentsia bonus because they're generally going to be in the right direction for us. Okay, let's, let's go. This is going to be fine because it's not going to radicalize landowners. So we shouldn't have a revolution. But then they're going to be weakened, which hopefully that plus the suppression means they'll become, uh, hopefully they'll become marginalized. I, I don't know, maybe they're in the government party. But hopefully they get, uh, they get small enough that then we can pass proper um, uh, women's suffrage uh, without them tearing the country apart. Mm -hmm. Extra taxation capacity is is handy. I'm not going to complain about that. Electrical capacitators, uh, capacitors, capacitators. I'm adding extra syllables. Uh, we only have a single power plant right now. Although we are we are building some more. Literally right this second, some are being built. So we're going to be switching over some modes. Oh, Polynesians to Venezia. Nice. <clears throat> it's not my computer. It's got to be something wonky in the algorithm, zooming the cause and performance set. Maybe. Yeah, it'd be interesting to note, like, for people to do some benchmarking, like, zoomed out here versus zoomed in here. To see, like, how that affects performance. Yeah, so I don't know. And it might be video card dependent, you know, some piece of code that works fine on an NVIDIA one, but not an AMD one, or vice versa. Crusade for change. Oh, okay. For appointed bureaucrats, pause a sec. Captured imagination of left, appropriately. So, left's for champion change. More momentum. Oh. Oh, or people speak and the nation shall listen. Yeah. I don't, um, d I mean, probably the leftist parties are okay, as long as they're not communist. But i much rather have the enactment success chance. I mean, that's pretty much always the button I'm going to hit when I'm trying to pass a law. So, we're still good friends with Tunis. I could expel bureaucrats, which lowers it a lot, but will give us um, some infamy, which I'm still at. Am I number one? When did that happen? Oh, we're just just barely, but we are ahead of France in terms of prestige. We also have the largest GDP in the world, I'm pretty sure. And number two per capita, which actually is pretty nice. Oh yeah, Norway, still sick with its GDP. Hmm, take that, Queen Victoria. Yeah, uh, Great Britain doesn't do as well in Victoria 3. They're not the uh, the same uh, end boss as they were in uh, Victoria 2. France tends to be the one in that spot. More people in Sardinia. Good. I mean, in theory, we're generating a lot of well-paying jobs. And hopefully pulling in lots of people. Chad. Yeah, that's one of our states. Excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's got the better wine now, huh? <laughs> Ooh, sugar shortage. So we're never really going to produce much sugar because um, all of our wheat farms and things are always... Well, no, hold on. Yeah, no, they're all in the vineyard thing. Um, sugar is pretty expensive. Some of these don't have wine modes. We don't have any millet farms. Or no, they're probably capped out. Let me just check. Um... Okay, I'm just going to click and then click because it's annoying with the mode here. Yeah, so you're on vineyards. Yeah, over here, fig orchards produce sugar. So rice farms, millet farms produce sugar for us. Oh, we have some livestock ranches not on the modes that we want. And yeah, at some point, electric fences. Actually, 
right now, this would be considered... Holy crap, that would free up a lot of workers. We would need a bunch more iron. And obviously electricity, but electricity coming on board. Right now, we don't have an electricity sink. I might... No, we'll wait a little bit more, but we will put on some electric fences soon. I'm sure of it. But yeah, so more rice farms and more millet farms would definitely lead to more sugar. Um, so let's see what we can do about that. Can I build more rice farms? Oh, can as well, too. Uh, let's, uh, let's start with five in one day. I'm going to queue up, uh, let's say, ten here. I think I can probably max out the rice farms in western New Guinea. And I'll build a single one in eastern New Guinea. Okay. Well, we could also import some sugar, and I think that's probably a fine idea. We've unlocked monitors. Hopefully we can get some flat screens soon. Oh, again, I, I need to know... I need to know on these screens what our actual shortage of this is. Let me show it here. Detail screen. Doesn't show it there. Ugh, not watching the World Cup. Well, I'm working, Kronberg. I'm sorry. I wanna. All right, so we have a 1K shortage of sugar. Theoretically, a little bit will happen from those plantations, but I think uh, some import is definitely called for. So let's get a bunch of Chinese sugar. Look at this productivity. That's sick. Okay. I wonder if we can import some fish, because we do have a shortage of that. I think. Is this staple good? Yeah, we're short 2K. We can build a bunch more fishing wars, but... And we probably will. Let's get some French fish. Cool. Here, we'll get some Austrian fish as well. Trading with a future enemy, but we'll see. Um, I have been importing wine. There's not a lot of options, at least last time I checked. Things may... Oh, hold on. I can get a bunch of French wine. I guess things have cycled. Okay, hold on a sec. Oh, we got our malaria prevention unlocked. Join the scrabble for Africa. Well, I mean, we've kind of been scrambling already. I like how, bring up the maps and straight edges. Yeah, you gotta get those straight borders. You can always tell that a border is super, like, natural and, and comes from um, um, observing and appreciating local culture and differences when a, a borderline is completely straight. That's obviously, a, a good sign to things. Uh, we're short. Oh yeah, we are short tons of wine still. Can we import more? We get the wine, uh, the French wine. We'll get the Austrian wine. But yeah, no one else is really there. Bum, 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 bum. Winds of change. Lazio. Oh hey. So Lazio is uh, where Rome is, right? Has come a long way since our attention was first brought to it, going from small houses and scattered farmlands to being on its way to becoming a blooming metropolis. Finally, Lazio shines like never before. So option one gives us. For two years, a bunch more loyalists from standard living increases, which should be good, or this is not the end. More urban center throughput. I think I'm going to go for the loyalist one. Now, tech... What? Okay, let's revisit the tech in a second, because I want to make sure... No, there's nothing else I can set up for colonization. <laughs> Malaria prevention did not open up more colonization options, or maybe we'll check again after it's had a few ticks. We'll see. Um, it's still going to help with colonization. Oh, actually because it opens up a new level of colonial affairs. I mean, we may pull back on this soon, but we technically still have colonies right now. So let's run that. Where are we gonna go? So pump checks are spreading to us right now. This will be really good, but um, I'm not gonna research it because we're taking advantage of the tech spread already. Although, I guess the way it works is in every category, one tech is spreading to you at a given time. So I guess if we did finish researching pump jacks ourselves, it would spread, we'd get another thing instead. So that might be worthwhile because it would free up some, some workers, right? Automatic irrigation? Actually, wait. Oh, no, this increases employment and consumes a bunch of engines for more goods. I would have thought automatic irrigation would be one of the techs that lowers the amount of workers you need, but sure. We'll, we'll check the interest thing. Yeah, maybe. I thought I had interests all over there, but um, I don't think there's anything I'm going to specifically research in the military. What about society? I'm 
give us more authority, but that's okay. Antibiotics is a little advanced for us still. I mean, it isn't always nice to grab these things for some free money. Oh, Zeppelins. Well, we don't have any skyscrapers yet, so. What about elevators? Free infrastructure? I don't know. I think, I think I'm just gonna accelerate the pump jack thing. We'll have to get our engine production up, but we'll see. I mean, we're going to want a bunch of engines anyway, because they're used for tons of things. Cross-border investments with food. Improve relations with Denmark. Now, the industrialists get pissed if we take this option. Uh, that would cause us to lose engines of progress, which I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take option one. I don't really care, I think, if Denmark likes me or not. But I guess we'll go for it. All right, money is still amazing sauce. Mm -hmm. Oh, plantation. Uh, well, let's do it for a bunch of workers. We'll keep try to keep transportation costs cheap. Oh, logging camps. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah, a bunch of qualifications. Okay, electricity's on the low side right now. I'm betting there's some places we can go to electric sawmills because they'll have the qualifications. Okay, we're still building electric plants. I know I want to do the um, the ranches as well. well. Let me go and flip that. Come back to you soon. Oh, railways. Uh, yeah, steel passenger cars. We want lot. Yeah, we want cheap transportation costs, please. Publicly traded on these is probably okay now. And I don't think we're gonna have to uh, subsidize these buildings anymore. I do have to bring the steel prices down some more, though. Okay. <laughs> Never heard of Canadian beer. Construction brands available abroad. Um, I actually don't know. Like, Canadian beer... The, so, there's obviously... Just like in any country, right? There's the big beer brands, which are always going to be kind of generic and boring, right? Whether we're talking about a Budweiser, a Heineken, a Molson Canadian. I mean, they're just sort of generic -y beers. They're fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not particularly exciting. Um, and then there's a lot of, like, smaller beer brands in every country that are excellent. Every country's got great um, beer culture, as it turns out, because people like beer. I don't think I'm going to make a, a change to our government here. I think we're good. But the problem is, I don't know how many of them get exported. So I don't know if there's, like, an international, like, Canadian beer brand I can really say, hey, look out for this. Um, there's a great... <laughs> there's a great brewery in southern Ontario, I think out of Toronto, called Amsterdam Beer, because that makes sense. And they make a great India Pale Ale, because that makes sense, called Bone Shaker. If you ever see that, take a look at it. People like beer. Quill with the controversial statements. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Ooh, unprotected trade route. Oh, it's a tiny one anyway. Um, okay, Venice, since you can build a skyscraper, you actually do seem like a good candidate for the government administrations. Anyway, I think I'm going to get you up to level 10 in here. And then just because it's fun, we're going to go ahead and get you started on a skyscraper. I mean, Venezia includes a bunch of territory, not just the swampy island bit, so hopefully we found some stable land to build that on. Dos Equis is a German beer brewed in Mexico? Oh, it's like, is it owned by a German company? Was it always owned by a German company? Did it start there? Because, yeah, I like Dos Equis. Um, I'm not a fan of Corona, insert commentary on in the last three years here, but Corona beer was never one of the ones I was into. I like Dos Equis, and I like um, Del Sol. I have to zoom in once to uh, once to build see the skyscraper looks like. I agree. So yeah, we are now running a deficit here, but that's because we are constructing like crazy. There's still 12 million in the investment pool, which is nuts. 
But yeah, I was gonna say right now, we're building a bunch of power plants. These do not come out of the investment pool. These are all coming out of our own pocket all the time. Uh, so yeah. Um, if we check market, is it under, what category is electricity? All right there. So we have a surplus and things are cheap right now. Okay, so let's go. Let's take a look at these livestock ranches and flip some of them over to electric fences. We'll do this a bit at a time. Well, actually, you know what? No, I'll convert everything over to electric fences. Uh, we might have a, a temporary electrical shortage. Depends on how quickly they switch over. But tons more power plants are coming in. Frick it, let's do it. I like Corona, but I don't enjoy two bitter beers, so I get why beer lovers don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't mind milder beers, but to me, Corona's a, a poor aftertaste for, for my palate. But everyone's got different, you know, different palates, different tongues. Okay, point of bureaucrats are in here. So this is further going to weaken the landowners, which is what we want. I'm betting, you know what, we're going to give it a go. We're going to try uh, to pass. We're going to go from... <laughs> From women having no rights to women having full rights. So the supporters of this are trade unions and intelligentsia, both of which I believe are in government. Yep. So we are getting the maximum that we can squeeze out of this, 30%. We're just going to watch to see if we're going to have a revolution that breaks the country. But I think we're in pretty good. You can literally control fence type for sheep in this game. Crazy the degree of detail. Yeah, well, I mean, it's ranches, it's livestock ranches, so it's not necessarily... You know, all livestock is clumped together. So this is coos and sheep and goats. What else would count as livestock? I mean, I suppose with this, they probably include pigs and things too, because there's no pig ranches. Bum, 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 bum. Do, 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 do. When it's a hot day and you're thirsty, that to me is a day when you don't want a strong, full flavored beer, right? That's a day where you do want one of the like big brand, you know, sort of milder flavor kind of beers. It's perfect for that. <laughs> I'm fond of pigs. Jedi, you're 100%. I can't think of pigs without thinking that quote from Civ 6. When Seeny Beanie says, I'm fond of pigs. I'm like, oh, Feeny. All right, there's our automatic irrigation. We'll be looking to make more of those flips soon. Mechanized farming, as I say, this is tractors, which takes engines and frees up some workers. Engines and coal. I kind of feel I'm going to start researching that. It's pretty fast. Again, we can make our workers more and more efficient. There you go. Now we've got a pig surplus again. So whenever we're not only building, like, power plants or whatever, we are going to sit on some cash. <laughs> Sentences. I'm also fond of pig. I mean, pigs are great. My brother has a pet pig. He's had a few. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These these four man of wars are so funny. This shortage of man of wars. Oh, how's our relationship with Tunis? We're still too friendly. Although, I feel like does cordial break at thirty? Might be twenty five. As soon as it's not no longer cordial, we can we can start a war. And again, I'm trying to avoid doing the expelled diplomats because it's going to generate extra infamy. We'll eat them up and we'll we'll fix up our market maybe a little bit. We do have oops, some low market access in places. This is one of the things that I actually would like a an easier to find UI because I want to build rail everywhere there's low market access. 